Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw a flower and bee in pastels. Now the first thing that I wanted to do here is get the background drawn in. Now the reason for this is I wanted the background to look like it's behind the subject. So for me, regardless of the medium that I'm working in, I will always get the background drawn in first. Now for this I'm using a combination of soft pastel sticks and pan pastels and I'm applying the pigment with the soft tool applicator to my pastel matte paper. Now in the real time tutorial I really do focus on how to get this soft seamless transition from one colour to the next but you can see here that I keep on layering and really building up that softness through the addition of layers. It's not about just working with one single layer and expecting it to look finished. Now it's at this point in the project where I wanted to create a colour swatch. Now what I've used here is a spare scrap bit of pastel matte paper. It's the same colour that I am using for my project, that's really important. And I'm just testing out the pencils that I have and seeing which layer and which combination of colours works best for what I want to achieve in my drawing. Now the reason I say about the layer is because you can use four or five pencils and apply them in different layers and you are going to get a different colour depending on if you'd use them in a different ordering process. So here if I want to start off with the purple I'm going to get a different colour than if I started with the pink. So it is going to all be about trial and error and there really is no right or wrong way of drawing this but I do think that if you are using a colour swatch it's going to help to prevent that stress of experimenting with those colours and those pencils directly onto the paper. So a colour swatch is a really good idea to just help break up that process and make it far less daunting. Now you can see at times here that I am um, sort of pointing at the pencils, I'm really explaining the technique and that's because in the real time version this has all been recorded with a voiceover while I'm drawing. So every single technique, the decisions that I make in that process are all explained at the time. Now this here really was a rinse and repeat process. Once I was happy with the pencils that I was using, it was all about studying the light source and the values. Now this is something that I talk about in every single video here on YouTube and of course in depth on Patreon. The way that the lighting catches the petals is not random, I really want to follow that in my reference photo. So you can see here that I'm now starting to apply some white on top of my purple and pink colours to hint at some of those petals that are catching more of the light. Now where you've got a highlight you're going to have a shadow, so you want to also look at your dark values just as much as those bright highlights. Now for the petals, the one thing that I really wanted to emphasise was the fact that every single petal had a slightly different shape. Although yes they are curved at the tips of those petals, they're all maybe slightly different in how narrow or how wide they are. So I really did want to make sure that I had a natural variation to make sure that I replicated this photo in a realistic way. Now the one thing that you can see here is that I'm working in small sections and I'm often just drawing one petal at a time. Now for me this is my preference, especially when I'm working on something where there is a lot going on. Now the one thing that I can't stress about drawing petals enough is that if we add an extra one or two, it really isn't going to make too much of a difference. Unlike when drawing animals, you don't want to be adding extra elements, bits of fur that aren't there because that can change the fur texture and therefore it won't resemble as much like that animal. But when drawing flowers, if there was an extra petal that was added here for whatever reason, it's not going to be an issue but I do want to be making sure that I'm studying it as closely as I can to the original reference photo and then for me I did just adjust my colours but in terms of the petals, the placements, how many petals there, I did want to get that as close as I could. Now I know there are artists who like to work in individual layers so we get the entire base layer done and then build up our layers from there and that's absolutely fine if that is your preference. But if you do find that you're hesitating, you're looking more at your reference photo, back at your artwork, not quite sure where you should be working, then that is a sign that maybe the area is too large. Try scaling that down to maybe one or two inches, one petal at a time, and then hopefully that should make that process a bit easier. So now that I've got more of the flower drawn in, you can really see how important it's been to work with the blending and softening techniques in order to create this out of focus effect. Now the techniques that I'm using here can be applied to any other portrait where we are working with those out of focus elements. I need to be very aware though that I shouldn't be over blending and this can happen very easily when using pastels. Because pastels do blend so beautifully together we can end up creating that soft out of focus effect and then take it too far. 
So what I will do here is really go back to certain petals and soften them even more if I need to. I'd much rather go back and add another couple of layers with those softening techniques and then just get that little bit more of an out of focus effect gradually then over blend initially too much and then I have to go back in with my pencils to bring in more of that harsher edge and make them a little bit more sharper. Now that is not a problem. If you do decide that that has happened anywhere through your drawing process, then it's very easily fixed. All you would have to do is just go back with your pencils, add another layer on top. You would still need to soften them back in, but being very aware not to over blend. But the wonderful thing with pastels is it's a very forgiving medium to work with. Now here you can see that I'm using that color swatch again and I just wanted to experiment with the colors that I had to replicate the inside vibrant darker magenta colors of the center of the flower. Now these are colors that I don't really use too often when working with pastels. There aren't many um, animals that would require this sort of coloring. So I wasn't quite sure what combination of colors I would use. So again, this is where that color swatch works really well. Now here, what I wanna be focusing on is ignoring all of the detail for the center of the flower. And I want to focus on what I think is behind that detail. So quite often here, we're gonna be working from dark to light and then building up our layers from there. Now the center of this flower, without a doubt, it can be complex. It's a, there is a lot of detail going on here, but by breaking it up into individual layers and only focusing on that one layer at a time, trying our best to ignore those details that are sitting on top, this becomes far easier to approach. Now this is something that I've spoken about in depth in the real time tutorial on Patreon. Given that this is a complex area to work on, I really do focus on this layering process and how to break it down, how to use our pencils to isolate the layer that we should be working on. Now, the wonderful thing about the techniques there is this method can be applied then to any other complex element with any other portrait. So the way that we break up the layers and the way that we look at a reference photo to know exactly what bit we should be working on next can be applied to any project going forward. Now onto the stem of the flower, I really did have to make sure here that I was using more of those softening techniques and I wasn't adding in any detail. This area of the flower is also out of focus, so I need to be making sure that the petals that are overlapping that are also softened on the edges as well. I don't want there to be any harsh edges where there shouldn't be because again, you're gonna be making that element look like it's in focus. So I was really happy with the flower there. I've got a few little things that I'm gonna be adjusting on that at the end of the project but now I can start working on the bee. Now, the one thing that I realized here is that I did miss some petals that are behind the bee's legs. So I had to go in and add those first. Once I was happy with that, that's when I can start breaking up this area of the bee and then focusing on one element at a time, just like I have done with all of the projects so far. So I started mapping in the eye. That's usually where I will start with any subject. I'll put in the legs and then really build up the body texture. Now, the one thing that I had to focus on here is in relation to the size of the portrait, this is only an eight by 12, so it's not a big project. This here, the bee itself was quite small. So I still had to get that fine detail, but I had to therefore use my pencils in the right way in order to get those fine hairs. So you can see here that now I'm starting to work with more of a sharper pencil, but I'm still focusing first of all on the base layers. Now the base layers here, these are the foundations for our details. So I do wanna be making sure that I'm hinting at the contrast. I'm mapping in my lights and my darks and that they're in the right place. Now it's only when I've mapped those in that I start coming back in now with my sharper pencils and hinting at those finer details. Now this is a very small area. I can't stress enough that we can only add in a certain amount of pencil strokes. Although this bee would probably have hundreds of tiny little hairs on that one section of the body, I don't physically have the space to add every single one. So what I need to focus on is the pencil technique. Now I've got a video here on YouTube and it's my top tips for drawing realistic fur in pastels. I'll link that in the description below if it's of interest and everything there would be applied in the same way to working on something like this. We want to be focusing on three main things. It's the fur direction, fur thickness, and fur length. So here I want to be making sure that I'm curving all of my pencil strokes to replicate those tiny hairs and that's gonna to help to build up the three dimensional shape of the body. Then I wanna be focusing on the length of those pencil strokes. 
if I make my pencil strokes too long here, I'm going to end up creating a really fluffy looking bee, which of course is not what we want. It's not realistic to that animal. And it's also about recognizing, do you need to create any lines at all? So for the highlights on the back part of the body, they are basically just dots. And that's because that surface there is shiny. They don't have any individual hairs on that part of the body. So I do wanna be making sure that I've used my pencil in a different way, varying the pencil technique to replicate the slightly different texture. Now quickly onto the wings, the one thing I will say is very important here is you do want that background color to show through. You'll notice there that I didn't go down with a solid, like a gray light color to replicate the shine of the wing. I actually put in my lighter colors on top of my background and allowed the background to show through in portions. That there is really important in capturing that transparent effect. Now I mentioned earlier that I would be going back in and just reinforcing my values, adding in any sharp edges or soft edges, and this is where the last couple of minutes are valuable. This really does make a huge difference to any project, so I would recommend to sit back in your chair, maybe put the artwork away for a day or two, and then look at it, is there any changes that you feel need to be made, and then sit back there and make those alterations to take your artwork to the next level. So I really do hope that this video has been useful. If you are interested in drawing along to the real-time version, then I will link all of my Patreon details in the description below. If this video was useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. I'd be really grateful. I also upload a couple of videos here to YouTube every week, so if you'd like to get notified of that content, then don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell button. If you've got any art-related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can. And I'm going to be uploading another video here to YouTube at the end of the week. But as always, thank you so much for watching.